All right, welcome to Greg's Stone Yard. In this video, I'm going to go over building a large rotary axis for my CNC stone saw. So this is my existing cart for the x-axis. See, it's a pretty simple setup. The problem with it is it's, uh, I have to always load the stone in from this side. And then when I do, there's no way to turn it uh, at all. So I've got a bunch of steel here. All these steel plates. And over here, got a bunch of uh, three and four inch I-beams. And those are going to be used build a rotary table. That's going to be the footprint of it there. That's uh, the steel for the, the part that rotates. I'll show you the design here. That's the plan. And then it'll be uh, computer controlled as well. The big gear that makes it rotate is right here. It's called the slew drive. That's the motor that's going to turn it. So I just have to get to cutting metal. Here I'm setting up the Langmere Systems Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table to cut some half inch steel plate that will be used as reinforcement for the uh, slew drive mount. And what I'm doing is finding the origin in the center of that plate and I'm using the uh, Easy Scriber uh, just as a fine point to find that origin. At this point, the torch is misfired and the uh, software has caught that and so it's stopped. Uh, it's most likely misfired because of duty cycle. It's only a 40 amp machine. It's an older Hypertherm 600 and uh, that machine's only rated to 40 amps and 3 8 material and I'm cutting half inch. So I use the run from here in the software which uh, uh, restarts the program at the, the last uh, start point and I'm just going through recovering that here and then it'll start again Here I'm cutting some 3 8 inch plate. This is just to give an idea of uh, the cut quality when cutting that plate. Here it finished the uh, cut no problem without any uh, torch misfires. Besides the CNC plasma cutting there was a lot of bandsaw cutting and a lot of uh, skill saw cutting of the plate to finally get ready to start welding. Here's the top clamped up ready for welding. Just have the top here ready to put the uh, top plate on. I 
welded up all the uh, high beams to the bottom plate put some paint on and uh, the way it's made is it's a 3 8 plate 3 inch high beam and then we got this other 3 8 plate to go on top and as I said earlier I've uh, drilled all these 7 8 holes so I can plug weld the top to the uh, table there and hopefully that works okay so I'm going to put this on there and weld it up right now So we're just stopping welding for today. I ran out of gas. And you can see how it's going on here. I'll show you. So not too bad. So I think I just have to do a little bit of grinding on those, get them flat. Finish up the holes once I get some more gas, and uh, then this top will almost be ready. Have the new bottom plate on there ready to weld up got it lined up so the center is in line with the cable and the other center is in line with the uh, the x-axis so I'll drag my uh, welder out and tack it in place. Just getting ready to uh, weld the four inch I beams here on the top of the plate that holds the slewing bearing. I'm going to drag the welder out here again and then uh, 
start tacking these into place. So this is the uh, finished underside. Uh, I just got finished welding this half inch plate in to the bottom here. These bolts are just set so I don't uh, get any weld spotter in the holes. Make sure everything's lined up. And then there's a, I got four here that are were used to tighten it down and clamp it in place while I weld. And so it's basically just a big washer and to help spread the load and uh, get the crap deck for the bolts that come with the uh, slewing bearing so it's the bottom of the bearing will be on the other side of this and the bolt through to here just put a bit of paint on this then I can flip it over and hopefully um, that bearing on there and get the top on. Getting ready to add a rotary axis to the stone saw. This is the big slewing gear that's going to run it. To tune a servo motor in CNC, you usually use the built-in logging software of the controller to do it. However, in my case, my axis moves so slow I couldn't use the built-in logging software, so I had to write my own. I'm using it here to do a test move and see how the axis reacts to the parameters I've set. logging it as it moves here. So what this plot is showing us is the red line is the commanded position, the yellow line is the actual position, and the black line is the error between those two. You can see you got about six counts of error and in total there is about 144,000 counts per one revolution of the large gear. And if we zoom in here we can see where it's changing position. You can see uh, there's the error of about six counts just as it's slowing down and changing position. So that's pretty good for this type of uh, CNC axis. Although on a high precision machine you'd want to do better. Just doing a backlash test here and ended up working out to about 28 counts of backlash which works out to about a 64th of an inch at a two foot radius from the center and uh, which for this machine is not too much of a concern uh, just because we're cutting stone here and if we always turn it in one direction then we don't have to really worry about the effects of the backlash and so far that's what I've done with my uh, with the test cuts that I've done
Okay, I have the uh, gear all installed here. And uh, now it's time to put the, the table on. So I, there it is there. So get the forklift out and I can get the table on top of this big gear and hopefully have a working A axis. Okay, the table's installed. It's all bolted down. So there's a cover for it right there I gotta put on. That's what those bolts are for right there. They're countersunk. So there's a flush top. Put that on and then uh, hook up the wires and it's time to test it out. Okay, try number uh, two here for the rotating table. Uh, when I put a heavy load on it, it would uh, tilt just enough so that it would touch. So you can see I've got just a little bit of clearance there. And so uh, the heavy load it would tilt just enough at, at the edges to touch so what I've done is add these helper wheels so there's uh, eight of them spaced around and they are yoke rollers with a dynamic capacity of 6,500 pounds I believe and a static of 15,000 pounds and they're inch and three quarters with a uh, half inch shaft so I've got them all installed now and I'm going to put the table back on put a heavy load on and see how it goes So here's how it looks after uh, coming off the saw for the first rotary cut. Got one small problem. You can see the 
It started to move up before it had finished cutting in here. So it's this, but there's this radius here that shouldn't be there. So I think I'm gonna have to uh, just manually add uh, some feed rate changes at the uh, entry to the cuts. And then this is cutting in the, it was cutting up this direction and then it just breaks through right here. So that, that'll just have to be cleaned up with a grinder. It's not too bad. Other than that, it seemed to work okay. Now I'll uh, take out the center piece and then uh, clean it up with a grinder and maybe polish the top. 